I'm going to go a little bit out of my comfort zone and going to do a book review. So I watch a lot of book reviews. I watch a lot of what they call it booktube, but I wouldn't put myself in that category at all but i enjoy the content i recently read a really good book and it's probably one of the best books i've ever read so i thought i wouldn't be doing it justice if i didn't spread the word and it's quite an unknown well it's not unknown it's pretty well known within like spiritual but I don't see it pop up a lot because it's an old book. It was written, I believe, in 1989. And this is the book that I'm gonna be reviewing today. You can see, and it's The Celestine Prophecy. And it's by James Redfield. I read this book while I was on holiday and I was happily surprised at how much I enjoyed it. So, I'll read what it says on the back. A book that comes along once in a lifetime and changes lives forever. Passed from hand to hand, from friend to friend since its first appearance in small bookshops across America, The Celestine Prophecy is a gripping and insightful adventure story that takes you on a quest to find an ancient pavilion manuscript and the spiritual insights it holds. As you embark on this journey, you will also discover that this remarkable book serves as a guide which not only has the power to crystallise your perceptions of why you are where you are in life, but to direct your steps with a new energy and optimism as you head into tomorrow. Basically, I really feel like this book summed up like so many beliefs, thoughts and ideologies that I've gathered over many years on my own personal spiritual path. So that's that was a really nice bonus. The fact that pretty much every insight that uh, the character stumbles across upon is an insight that really resonates with my own beliefs. I definitely think that the author used a lot of his own experiences and maybe a lot of what he learned on his own spiritual path and used them for the manuscript that the story is based upon. And I will say now, pretty sure that I'm likely to say spoilers within this because I'm not very good at doing book reviews and this is the first book review I've ever done so there's likely going to be spoilers so before I go into more of the story for the people who do want to read this book turn off this video in a minute because I don't want you to have any spoilers but basically definitely go ahead and read this you won't regret it I'm pretty sure like anybody could benefit from reading this and just learning a little more about this manuscript that he talks about these insights because I think they resonate so much even today 2019 30 years later and I still feel this resonates so well if not even more with people of today and where we are spiritually where we are with the consciousness shift even though this doesn't talk about the consciousness shift we are going through, it pretty much alludes to that. In other words, it's talking about the same thing. Our humanity is going to change a lot on a consciousness level. Where we are heading for our, the change in consciousness and how that's going to change how we live, how we um, interact with each other and how we run our society so that's it for now if you want to go check it out i would turn off this review because i'm going to talk a bit more about the story there's likely going to be spoilers okay thank you bye Okay, let's get into the review. So this story started off, I haven't written any notes because I just wanted to do a really casual review here and I thought anything that I wanna say, I'll just say and then you can take what you will from it. This story, it starts off, I don't know the main character's name to be honest. 
pretty sure that you don't ever get the main character's name and I did try and look it up to be sure and I think the main character is just the narrator but that's kind of strange I never noticed that till now when I was like trying to talk about the main character so anyway so it sort it is read from first person basically just feel like you're going through this adventure that this guy is taking you through so first of all the book starts out that he meets an old friend who i get the feeling is an old lover pretty sure is an old lover actually who ends up telling him that she's come back from peru and she just learned about this super top secret um manuscript that is just being held down by the church so the there's some priests that are trying to secretly leak out the manuscript and then there's some that are trying to stop that also the government are also a part of trying to stop the exposing of this manuscript so it's like a really old manuscript that's like gonna tell us how to live um, to basically raise consciousness to basically live better overcome this suppressed stage that we are at in life right now where we don't know the full potentiality of what humans can do here where we feel where we're basically slaves to our own productivity so anyway she comes she says i've learned the first insight of this manuscript i know it's something you're gonna be really interested in and basically she turns on a few lights in the minds of the this guy and he decides to head over to Peru just on a whim because he was already taking like a year out to just find himself you know as you do um, like living on his own in the woods so he was having a few expansive experiences and this was really calling him when he jumps on the plane over to Peru he happens to meet another guy who I believe is some type of scientist he just overhears speaking about the manuscript he ends up talking with him they make plans to meet up in Peru and they're both looking for the next insight of the manuscripts and i believe that this guy had the second insight so now he's learned the first insight from the ex he's learned the second insight from this random stranger on the plane when he gets to peru and he's on his way to meet up with this guy i believe was called dobson that he met on the plane um he ends up realizing that his life is in danger that he sees dobson is running from the authorities and there's gunshots coming off and everything so he sees that they're also following him and maybe they heard them talking about it on the airplane and they're obviously like i said before they're trying to stop anybody who's trying to find out about the manuscript or spread the word about the manuscript so he ends up running down some alley and ends up bumping into some other guy called Will, an old guy, and he ends up taking him under his wing. And I believe it was Will who then gave him the third insight. He then is taken to this really out in the middle of nowhere. There's this like research center, which is in the middle of these amazing, like the most beautiful natural woods where things are maintained in the woods, but like they're left to go their natural way. And apparently this creates a certain type of energy. So when you're not fucking around with nature, it creates like a really potent energy that then they were using this energy for their science experiments and all of this, it had a lot to do with the insights of the manuscripts. So then he ends up bumping in to another uh, scientist, Sarah, who I believe then gives him another insight, the fourth insight. And then he does end up catching eyes with a lady called Marjorie, I think, who he fancies. So like, that is the only kind of love anything going on in this book so if you're looking for a romance like it's not the book because <laughs> you know i'll tell you now he fancies marjorie but they never do more than one little kiss and when it, when they did kiss i was 
I was shocked because it was like quite near the end of the book and I was like, I weren't expecting that. Like it's not that kind of book, right? But luckily it just stayed at a kiss. And then that was literally only so he could learn that having um, a relationship where you feel like obsessed with someone, like he was beginning to feel towards uh, Marjorie that this, it was the eighth insight or the ninth insight or something. I, I can't remember all the insights, but you do that, you are relying on energy from that person instead of your direct energy from the universe. So it cuts you off from your universal energy. So then he realizes like, no, I need to like keep my own connection and find out the rest of the insights. So goodbye, Marjorie. <laughs> That's way further down in the book. Like I said, this is gonna be a really sh quick review. Then he's at this science place and he's finding out about the next insights. And these insights are so interesting. I only eat plants. That's like a strong belief I've had for like many, many years. Like I've been vegan for six, almost seven years about the benefits of eating plants and how that can affect your energy. So it was really cool to see that in the book. Also, they talk about talking to the plants, how it has such positive effect on your body and the healing properties of foods are way more enhanced when you, when that plant that was grown was like nurtured and loved and um, given a lot of care and energy towards it while it was growing. So like that was really cool because I, I again I find those studies super interesting anyway and now we are able to even prove a lot of this sort of stuff and it's interesting to see somebody writing about it back then somehow then he realizes that he has to leave this research center because a lot of the government officials are coming down and this guy will is like you need to get out of here come with me because like if you're not a scientist then they're definitely gonna want you out of Peru you know out of the country or detained for questioning like what do you know about the manuscript they're trying to basically get rid of all copies of the manuscripts and now he's got like I think possibly the fifth sixth insight by now that he's learned through the time of being at this research center first insight spoke about coincidences and how like coincidences are just little signs little gifts for us if we tune in and pick up on what message is in that coincidence there's always a reason why that happened a reason why you bumped into that person a reason why you heard that thing that you heard and then that plays out through him receiving all these other insights so right from the first insight he learned that important information that was able to help him every insight he learned helped him gain the knowledge of the next insight that was about coincidences and then like another one of the insights was like i said about and projecting energy toward things as well so like the plants and making them more healthier when we're able to project positive energy loving energy towards them when these coincidences will come up then if he was tuning in and paying attention then he would gain the next insight but if he wasn't tuning in not paying attention which happened a few times he missed opportunities for him to gain more knowledge to set him more toward his path and finding these insights. Another really cool insight that they spoke about, so it was like one of the la later insights, maybe it was the eighth insight, and it was about like control dramas. And these control dramas, I guess, are sort of kind of personality traits that we can pick up and then often picked up from our childhood. So I'll, I'll briefly explain the control dramas that were mentioned. So you would have people who were either intimidator, an interrogator, a aloof, or a poor me. And basically, say if your parents were interrogators, that could make you aloof or poor me. And if you 
if your parents were maybe aloof, then that would make you likely more to be an interrogator who like asks loads of questions. So it's it's all about how you get attention and how you get attention is how you get energy. So if you're lacking that attention or lacking that energy, you're gonna take on a certain control drama. So aloof people, they get energy from people by being aloof because it makes people draw into them and be like, what's going on with you like ask you loads of questions they're trying to figure you out you know and when people are doing that to you you the aloof person who's just like not giving any clear answers not giving anything away that is lapping up the energy because that pe other people are focused on you because they're trying to figure you out the same way the interrogator um would gain energy be by asking loads of questions and like trying to get your attention by keeping your attention through conversation through asking you questions by wanting to know everything or like trying to find maybe things wrong with what you're doing and it's just their way of getting that energy from you often you would be that way if if you was dealing with a lot of aloof people because aloof people will bring that out of you that drains your energy though um but when you're able to get answers back and attention for that, that's giving you energy. And the intimidator is obviously someone who's gonna be intimidating verbally or physically. And that one's quite obvious. Like they're demanding attention from you. Like you don't have a choice but to know. You cannot ignore intimidating people. You have to face them and that gives them energy but that can make you aloof or that can also make you poor me. Poor me people are like, oh, it's poor me, everything goes wrong for me, they did this to me. You're getting attention through having empathy, from having sympathy from people, um, and it's sometimes not always necessary, and it also takes power away from yourself. So talks about those control dynamics and how by getting rid of those control dynamics you just have to name it so if someone's being aloof with you just say look you're being aloof and stand offish and distant and like if you just don't want to communicate with me that's fine I'll go and come back when you actually want to give me some attention and energy or if not then let's just not communicate anymore because it makes me feel like you're draining me when you're acting this way often if you name it that way then that's going to stop, the behaviour will stop, it cannot carry on because you've named it. The same as if someone's intimidating you, you say, you're intimidating me, please stop. I don't appreciate it and I don't want you to intimidate me. You can talk to me in a respectful manner or you can go away until you can calm down and we can communicate like normal human beings you've named it, that person can't continue to intimidate you anymore. So that's like a really cool realization because I knew that already, but I like knew it in different terminology. So it's like nice to hear it in a whole other way. Like, um, you know, the same with the coincidences, that's what I call synchronicities. And it's just the same thing that I know, but told in a whole other way. And it's, it's always nice to see it see the same thing but from a different perspective and yeah so I really enjoyed that part learning about the control dramas because I just felt like that really resonates and makes so much sense for our behavior dynamics that we have in society right now as he goes on he will meet people who give him the insights I won't say the ending because I feel like you could still read this and enjoy this now like if you thought oh I won't read it I'll just watch this review I really think you should read it because it's such a good experience and I can't recommend it enough. And for that, I'm not gonna tell you the ending. Ended at the ninth insight, and from what I can see is that they do have other books. He does have other books, so I haven't read the other books yet. I probably will um, give those a try though. And I think they go on to like the 10th, 11th insight and whatever. So um, it ends on the ninth insight, and what's really cool is that that kind of leaves you in a place of understanding exactly where humanity is heading. I really resonate with the manuscripts so much. It really lines up so perfectly with my own beliefs. I know this has probably not been the best review. Like I said, I'm not 
too good at book reviews this is the first one I've ever done but overall I really enjoyed this book and I didn't want to give away too much of the story because I really recommend that you go ahead and check it out and read it yourself it was a really cool adventure story that I think anyone especially anyone interested in spirituality definitely recommend this book so i hope you enjoyed this review and thank you for watching and i'll see you next time bye